Agent Power Huddle is a daily jumpstart, giving you all the tools you need to create an amazing real estate career. Led by top experts in the field, you'll learn how to sell more houses in less time while creating the life you want. Welcome to the Agent Power Huddle. Well, good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Happy Mindset Monday. I'm Susan Johnson, Susan Johnson and Associates, and I see people still logging in. Oh, my goodness. I see a very special friend of mine has logged in, and I'd love for her to turn her camera on if she can. Hi, Sandy. Welcome. Hello, Mike. And I see more people coming on. Autumn, great to have you here on Mindset Monday with Agent Power huddle it's a special day today for me guys it's my birthday today and i'm gonna own it and enjoy it and i have to share this really funny story with you before we get into our topic i feel like i have gained another year of my life what does that mean well this is the second time this has happened but if you listen into some of my past agent power huddles it's super funny because thank you for your happy birthdays it's super funny because Um, I have been living 59 years old the whole last year. So apparently I'm turning 59 today. So I kind of feel like I just got an extra year in my life because I thought I was 59 all last year. So, hey, what do you what do you know? I got another extra year of being 59. So anyway, um, happy Monday. Like I said, we're going to be talking today about becoming the very best versions of ourselves. And this is a great topic and I have spoken about it in the past and they usually will take different um, different turns here and again, because just depending upon what you're going through in your life, you know, you may have been at that top at one point and maybe tumble down you know, a little bit because you made some choices and they weren't maybe the best choices for you and you have to climb and build your way back up again. But today we are going to continue the pursuit of being the very, very best version of ourselves. So stay tuned here, hang in there. Uh, Like I said, join in and unmute yourself if you want to come on. A lot of people listen back to us on podcasts. um, And so you do that as well. So we're always searching, like I said, for the, you know, the questions that we ask ourselves is our, you know, things about our identity, things about our, our confidence, about what our fulfillment is. And sometimes those answers could fall a little bit short for us, you know, and we're thinking, gosh, you know, I feel like I can do better. You know, if you're you're on this call, you're usually feeling we're always feeling like we can do better. We want to, you know, continue to raise the bar. Good morning, Katrina. Continue to raise the bar, continue to improve upon where we already are in our lives. And that's what this is about today. What to do to do that, though, it does take some authenticity. It takes some self-discovery, right? Um, And, you know, I don't know if you've met other people, maybe you're, this is you yourself, hopefully not, probably not if you're on this call, but uh, you met people that maybe they're going through something or having some challenges and, uh, you know, and maybe their, their mindset is not the best. And they're always, you know, pointing outward saying, you know, the answers are out there. Or it's somebody else's fault or, you know, it's not, it's not on me, that kind of thing. And so I'm going to tell you this little quick story before we dive in a little bit deeper. And I love this story because I think it really illustrates what this is talking about. I don't know, you may have heard it. It's about the man who lost his keys. So there's this man and he's in his house and and he's just about getting ready to leave. And he picks up his car keys. He's just about to leave the house. And all of a sudden there's a blackout and the lights all go out and he drops his keys. And he's like, oh my gosh, he, I, I gotta go, but i lost my keys. And it's pitch black. He can't see anything in the house. And so he's looking around, looking around, but he can't find those keys. He's like, well, I'm in a dilemma. I really need to solve this problem, right? I'm in a dilemma. I can't find my keys. But he peeks out the window and he sees, hey, you know what? The the lights are on outside. There's street lights. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to find my keys. Sounds silly. He goes outside and he's looking around all over outside for his keys. His neighbor comes outside and the neighbor says, what you doing? He goes, can you help me? I'm really, really trying to find my keys. I lost them and I got to find them. I got to solve this problem. Neighbor said, sure, I'm happy to help you. So the neighbor starts looking around outside for the keys as well. Well, it's it's really silly. Of course, they can't find them. And the neighbor finally says, well, do you remember where you lost him? He goes, well, well yeah, I lost him inside, inside. And you see where I'm going with this, right? And the neighbor's looking at him go, you know, your solution is inside, okay? Your solution is inside. You need to 
go inside. And so the becoming, I love that story because becoming the best version of yourself will require you really to look within you, to look inside yourself, to become authentic and vulnerable to answering some of the questions and to to identifying, well, where the heck do you want to go? What does the best version of you really look like? Another way, so remember that story, if you find yourself going, gosh, I, you know, somebody else or the answer is out there, usually the answer is right in here, only we have to stop and identify it, and you have to look inside to find that answer. So, you know, I want you to visualize this and finding your ideal self, what does that really look like? Well, you can do a visualization exercise, and this is how this goes. Pretend you're going on a first date and guess who the part of the date is? It's you sitting on the other side of the table. Okay, so visualize it's you sitting on the other side of the table. Ask yourself these questions. Hey, you know, what kind of activities do you really enjoy doing? What activities have you wanted to do, but you just you haven't done them? And why not? Right. Um. What kind of people do you like to be around? Who, when you're surrounding yourself, really fires you up, really lights that passion within you because you are just so, you know, excited and pumped, you know, to roll out of bed because you are now inspired by others around you. Who are those people? And are you hanging around them enough? Ask this person that question. What are some of the happiest memories when you're thinking back um, in times of your life? What are some of the happiest memories and where were you at that time in your life? Ask yourself these questions. So you're sitting on this date of you on the other side of the table and you're just discovering some of the questions that maybe we get too busy in our lives and we don't, you know, we, we forget. It's not that we're intending to neglect certain areas in our life, but You know, we can sometimes just get too busy. And what do we do, especially if you're on this call? This is so common for, you know, high producing agents, people, you know, that we tend to put some of our own needs and wants on the back burner because we have a a lot of us have the servant's heart that we're always helping others to try to get what they want. Right. Right. So in reality, you get where I'm going with all this. We have to take these concrete steps with inside us to really build and become the best versions of ourselves. And life is always cyclical. You know, we're all, we're going up and down roads and, and we've got a breakdown to break through. You've heard me talk about that before as well. So you could have been way up here. You were living the best life that you felt. Gosh, I'm already at the best version. Well, you know, guess what? There's another level. There's another level of best version all the time because We are constantly creating, we're constantly growing, we're changing. Some of our priorities may change as we get a little bit older. This on my 59th birthday today, as I think about, you know, what some of my priorities, thank you, (laughs) some of my priorities are in terms of, you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, it was, I was on that treadmill and that grind. Mind, you know, and now, of course, I'm still always improving my own business and my family and all that, but I do want to make sure I have the time to travel to see my kids who now live in another state, to see my new grandson, spend my granddaughters, spend time with them. Your, your priorities will change. So keep asking yourself these kind of questions. There's certain steps, as I just mentioned, though that you really do need to go through over and over and over again. Because though we think as we continue to grow that we're not going to reach get these little hurdles and bumps and bruises along the way in pursuit of our best, our best versions of ourselves, we do. The first one are those darn limiting beliefs. Okay, the limiting beliefs... It, I hate to say it, are they, you know, um, you might disagree with this, I don't know. Um, they, they don't always go away. What happens is as you build these muscles that we're talking about in every one of these agent power huddles, when you 
what will happen is you start to notice when they come up, then they creep up that you're not in those funks as long. When you come up, you know, a limiting belief that maybe you've got, and when it shows up, now you're a little more aware of it. And now you can tackle with the tools that you learn how to get by and understand that, you know what, that's my own subconscious that's trying to block me again. And you know what, this time it's not going to do it. It's not going to do it because I'm going to change my perception and get back on track and moving forward and pushing through that limiting belief. You see? So it's not that they go away, mind you. It's that we become better, a better version of ourselves, stronger. We become able to identify because we're aware. We've raised our self-awareness enough that we're like, you know what? I can conquer this now. I believe in myself enough because I've done enough to know that anytime one of these these limiting beliefs come up, I got to push through that fear and realize, you know what? It's not going to stop me. Got to keep going. The next thing you have to do in these steps to continuing becoming that best version of yourself is continuing to amplify your strengths. And we hear this a lot too, agent power huddles, a lot of the things that we you know, listen to uh, on different podcasts, but amplifying our strengths. Do you really know and do you really own your own strengths? That sounds like it's such an obvious answer, and yet it's not. You know, many people, gosh, before I got my real estate license 20 some odd years ago, um, I was waitressing and people would say, you know, you'd make a great real estate agent. I was in college doing other things. I wasn't even thinking about becoming a real estate agent, you know, but it's funny how others will see in us other things before we see them within ourselves. Other friends of mine, you've heard me tell this story, would, would, would encourage me into leadership positions when I didn't see it. You know, good goodness, all the way back in high school, run for class president. My, my friends and my tribe were the ones telling me I needed to run for the, the class president. Did I see? I didn't see that within myself until they encouraged me to do so. So sometimes these amplifying your strengths, if you're not really fully aware, or maybe you are and you don't realize how good you are <laughs> and what these strengths are, start to think about what are others seeing in you that you've heard repetition over and over again just it's been a kind of a thread through your whole life you know my, my son is a great example I call him the genius of all geniuses because he trains the geniuses at the genius bars in apple wow yeah okay so I say wow he always seems to be in this pursuit of looking elsewhere for where his where he's going to go I'm like do you realize that you are so good that this is such a natural strength for you, that you help so many people, that you have risen not only to the genius level for Apple, but now you're training the geniuses. He, he doesn't see it. I see it. It's very clearly, not just because he's my son. But when you're amplifying your strengths, you're also going to see that when you hit roadblocks, you can start using some of these strengths is kind of like over the top. If you ever seen that movie over the top, that, that arm wrestle that you can go over the top and crush it. All right. Become that best level, that better version of yourself. Um, the other thing, a step you always need to take in becoming the best version of yourself. Once again, you all hold this, which is adopting that growth mindset. We can always learn and grow. Always, you never stop learning, ever, ever, ever. You know, and it, especially in the world of real estate, you know, we, um, well, actually in everything, but in the world of real estate, it is always something we are growing, changing new systems, you know, new strategies. Um, and it's up to us to know that we are continuously a student. And if you've adopted that mindset, then you are always on the journey of becoming a better and better version of you and yourself, right? So when you're doing that, you know, you're actually doing something else along the way. If you listen to Tony Robbins, it's called raising your standards. You start to learn where your standards are. We talked about this last week on Aging Power Huddle. You know, no one's ever going to expect more from me than I expect from myself. You adopt that mindset. You're never going to disappoint anybody because, you know, your standards are 
higher than what they could ever have of you in the first place. It's owning it. It's going inside. Keys are inside, right? They're inside you. The next step you have to take is sometimes you have to be willing to let go of an old identity. Okay, that's an interesting concept. An old identity, it requires old identities. This can happen in women, but it does happen predominantly more in men because they're taught from such a young age not to always show their emotions and you know it's weak to be vulnerable. And well, women, you may feel this too. But truth being is when you let go of your old identity, if you're feeling like, you know, you've always got to be strong, you've always got to have you know, that smile on your face and you can't be vulnerable, then you're going to limit yourself. You will absolutely limit yourself with that kind of an identity and that kind of a belief system. So I don't remember what podcast it was on. It was something I listened to this last week that, you know, talked about vulnerability. And I loved it because being vulnerable requires something called courage. It requires it. You cannot be vulnerable if you don't have courage because it takes courage to be vulnerable. Isn't that interesting? People will sometimes think, well, if I'm vulnerable, I'm going to be viewed as weak. No, 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 no. Being vulnerable is actually a superpower. Being vulnerable allows you and shows that you have the courage to take the risks required no matter what the outcome is, because you know that whatever the outcome is, okay, if it's not the outcome you want, then you're gonna learn from it. It's not, I'm a failure. What a mindset shift that is, right? Be vulnerable, have courage, know that, you know what? It's not about, you wanna be the best version of yourself, you better take more risks. That's the only way. Being vulnerable and having the courage to try something because you know that, you know what? Not what if it doesn't happen. What if it does happen? There is the, 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 key, the key inside once again, right? Yeah. Well, unlock that door. You've got the key now. It's inside. Be vulnerable and understand that courage is a superpower. And you cannot be vulnerable without having courage. That was a big thing in this podcast. I got to remember what it was. Great podcast. But it talked about she this 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 speaker was challenging. I mean, every executive and every entrepreneur at the highest level saying, think, you know, think of a time when you were vulnerable. Did it take courage? Did it take courage to actually actually be vulnerable and take the risk that you did? Every one of them had to answer yes. And that's when they finally realized that, oh my gosh, she's right. She's right. When I'm vulnerable, I'm actually showing strength. I'm actually showing courage. And it changed the mindset, the old identity of those who always felt that they had to shield themselves and, and, and hide behind that vulnerability because they felt like it was a sign of weakness. When it's not, it's a superpower. Remember that. And when that leads right into taming your fears, doesn't it? That's the next step. So when you're vulnerable and you take those actions and you you challenge yourself to be courageous, you're taming the fears. It all ties together. You're taming those fears because fear means false evidence appearing real. That's all fear is. False evidence appearing real because it's only appearing real right here in our between our own ears. We are the ones that get these things that we're, we're in fear from, right? And sometimes it's the silliest things. I'm afraid of fish. <laughs> Is that the silliest thing? I've really conquered and broke through. That's a whole other story of how I finally am breaking through that fear. But it was, I mean, people couldn't understand it. Why I would be so afraid of getting in the water with a bunch of fish, beautiful fish. But now I'm snorkeling and, you know, I'm breaking through it breaking through and taking action. I know it's these are, so our fears are silly in, in a lot of ways. Just remember it robs us. Fear robs you from the courage that you, you know, that you know you've got within you from being vulnerable. In order to to break those fears that you've got to take action. It's just that's all what it comes down to. The next step on on becoming this better version of yourself 
um, means prior prioritizing the outcomes that you're looking for. So that's a really important one because a lot of times we have all these to do's, right? And we've got this whole list of things that, okay, we to be the best version of myself, I have to do numbers 100 through 99. <laughs> okay. Well, then you get overwhelmed because there's just so much. So it goes back to identifying and really prioritizing what's I'm really what's it really going to take to get where I want to go to be the best version of myself and I, I taught an exercise that I learned from Tony Robbins um, on creating a massive action plan and writing down as many things you can think of you know that it's going to get you where you want to go what actions do you have to take write them down as many as many as many and as fast as you can then take a yellow highlighter and identify the top three you see, identify and narrow down and prioritize really what are the most reasonable goals you're setting for yourself to become the best version of yourself, to take your business to another level, take yourself to another level, your family, whatever it takes. And then the next step would be to create some rituals that are going to empower you to follow through. All right, what are these rituals looking like? You know, the best athletes in the world, the best leaders, they have rituals, like our morning routines. Even before Agent Power had to line up by six o'clock and doing my morning routine before I get on this call, the morning, the reading that we talk about, the affirmations that we talk about, the setting up, you know, knowing what my day is going to look like. What does that look like? Your morning routine, exercising, you have exercising your morning routine. That is one of the the empowering rituals day in and day out that creates these habits and your habits do in fact show up right in terms of how you're going to perform out there the habits will create your empowered state to continue to move forward another step is also having some compassion for yourself though you know Compassion for yourself is a big deal. I mean, when you are a risk taker and when you are always looking to become a better version of yourself, as I mentioned, you do allow yourself to become vulnerable. You do allow yourself to challenge and, you know, and have that courage to try new things. And sometimes those new things may not work out. What happens to your mindset at that point? Ask yourself that very important question. And the reason I bring that up is because, you know what, you, you can't compare yourself. Don't compare yourself to other people. You know, they're all, everybody's got their own journeys. And by God, don't compare yourself on Facebook because half the time that, you know, they're all showing up, of course, you're best for yourself. But at the same time, there's also reality. And maybe we're not posting all the things that are the challenges in our life up there on Facebook. Okay. But when you come to that crossroads, where you've made a bad choice or you've taken a risk and I've got a candle burning that's causing some smoke over there. <laughs> okay. Um, causing some risks that you, that you take and you're going, oh my gosh, that didn't work out so well. Oh, probably shouldn't have made that decision. That wasn't really the right move. Have some compassion. Understand that you're in a crossroads that you, you know what? Bravo, give yourself a hand that you are not going to look back because you know what? You did that. It didn't work. So that's a road you know not going to work. We learn and we course correct. And there's your key. Don't live there. Don't stay there. If you made a bad decision, a bad choice, and it's not working out for you for whatever reason, course correct. We can do that over and over and over again. Yeah. Again, being my 59th birthday, I've been through a lot of course corrections over the years. So, um, it takes some compassion, some self-compassion. Don't beat yourself up. That doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. Beating yourself up takes you nowhere but into a negative self-talk. You've got to shift that like that, a pattern interrupt, as Tony Robbins calls it. Do a pattern interrupt if you find yourself in that position. Okay. So you've got to manage yourself. That's the next step is managing yourself. And, you know, and that becoming the best version of yourself, as I talked about, your, your empowering rituals, your morning routine, you're managing yourself. If, you know, we, we, we want to try to help a lot of other people. I mean, I know that's 
most everybody that especially listens to these calls where sometimes we we can't help everybody and sometimes you and i hate to say that because we want to our hearts our servant heart wants to try to solve the problems but remember where's the key inside all we can do is help other people to self-discover and i was recently in a position just the last couple of weeks where we've got some family members that are having some real challenges and i'm trying everything i can to help them self-discover but they're in such their bitter anger they're going through a divorce but they're in such bitter anger they can't see past here okay can't see past here as much as i try to give them tools and tell them self-discover look instead of trying to villainize another person or find that we you know then why don't you actually show your strengths yeah i'm pausing purposefully in that because it really, I got so close to that situation that it, it was, it really messed with my own mindset because I'm like, Oof, this is really draining because you can't help somebody that doesn't want to accept the help. See the difference? All you're going to do is like running yourself into a dead wall over and over and over again. It's like pounding your head against the wall, you know, and what's going to happen? You're going to end up with a real bad headache. So in managing yourself effectively, do continue to try to help, but you also need to realize when it's actually draining out something out of you. I got, came to one point in this conversation as I'm trying to talk to both of them, uh, you know, that I, I mean, I literally was, was shaking because it was like, oh my gosh, they, they, they don't, it's so clear that they don't see it. Okay. So manage yourself effectively, meaning protecting yourself as well in your own mindset, staying positive. I can't, you're not going to be positive all the time. All right. And yet it's when something does come up, you don't just live there. Right. You know, if you know, people have been in funks for weeks, you know, weeks, good friend of mine, she had a breakup got at least six months ago and um, we got together and, you know, we worked through a lot of it together. I tried to help you to be there for her and everything six months later. And she's still telling me she's not getting out of bed six months later. There's a problem with that. You know, again, I can try to help. We can try to help others, but they need to find that and stay positive and say, okay, I know I'm in this position, but this is what I have to do to pattern interrupt this and get out of it because being the best version of yourself is going to require you to self-discover and acknowledge when these kind of things will show up. Folks, nobody has a perfect life all the time. They just, they don't. Okay, be if you're really being honest, there's something along the way, you know, a connection. There's something going on all the time. If you're challenging yourself enough, taking enough risks, you will know that. So, just stay positive, and as you come across those roadblocks, acknowledge, course correct, and keep on tracking, keep on going. Remember that your beliefs will always create your feelings. Okay, that also create re. The, any actions that you take that will then create the results that show up. It's always that continuous circle. So continue on creating that best version of you every day, all the time. Course correct when you need to. Know that you've got support, especially here with us on Agent Power Huddle. And I'm going to leave you with a quote this morning. And this quote is very simple. It just says, do something today that your future self is going to thank you for. And that's that always being on that road of continuous self-improvement. Hey, always great to to talk with you guys on Agent Power Huddle. Listen back to all these uh, Agent Power Huddles because, my gosh, they really help empower us in every area of our lives. And thank you for joining us today. It was great having you here on my 59th birthday on Agent Power Huddle. If you'd like more information or to get connected to the Agent Power Huddle, join our free Facebook group. This call was designed for the agents in our EXP organization, but open to any agent from any brokerage. If you're a guest and you're interested in learning more about EXP or our specific resources within the Agent Collective, reach out to the person who invited you to this call to get more info. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.